Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady, here to help you become an expert primary maths teacher so that all your children become fluent, creative and confident with their maths. This is the sixth video on teaching maths to children aged six to seven years old. And in this video, I'm going to explain how we introduce children to the base 10 structure and start them doing some great maths with it. In this video, I'll explain what the mathematical structure of base 10 looks like at this level and how it's different to the other structures that we've been exploring in this video series. I'll look at the different representations of base 10 that you may well teach with. I'll explore some of the foundational work we need to do with base 10 before we move on to starting column addition and subtraction. And then I'll explain how we get started with column addition and column subtraction with and without exchanging. Right, let's get started. So the best way to explain what this structure is and what it isn't is to bring out my penguins on icebergs again. In the video on bead strings, I explained how these icebergs can be joined end to end to reflect the bead string structure. And in the video on number squares, I explained how they can be joined side by side like this to mirror the structure of the number square. But they can also be free. And when they are free and we're counting up penguins and we're counting the tens and we're counting the penguins that don't fit on the icebergs, then they are behaving like base 10. So base 10 is about free blocks of 10 that are no longer constrained to be in a line or in a square. And of course, the classic representation of base 10 is with Dean's blocks. And we're only talking about the tens and the ones at this level. We may discover a little bit about going beyond 100, but we don't necessarily need to introduce the 100 flat. It's all about working with tens and ones. So most expert teachers work with two representations of base 10. One where the objects are easily disconnectable. So that may be the penguins on icebergs. Some teachers have traditionally liked to bundle and unbundle straws. So we have bundles of 10. And this was a great use of an old box of plastic straws because they last very well. and get good use out of them since they've already been made. Some teachers bundle and unbundle pencils into groups of 10. If you've got boxes of pencils in 10 and you've got lots of them, you can use those. You can use Multilink. And really you can use anything that will easily bundle into recognisable groups of 10 or groups that you can teach the children to recognise the groups of 10 because they've counted them and they've put them together. So in practice, you will need one representation of base 10 that is bundleable and unbundleable or separable and inseparable. And then you may well choose also to use the Dean's block representation. Now they can't be split. So the children need to carefully count these and discover that there are 10 blocks in one of these straights. And they will need to exchange straights for individual blocks rather than splitting them. So it's a slightly more technical bit of apparatus to use. So we usually work with something that's splittable or unbundleable first. So there's two sets of warm up exercises that we need to do before we get onto column addition and column subtraction. One is to make sure that children are correctly understanding their base 10 representations. So if you show them objects that are bundled in tens with extras, can they very quickly identify how many objects there are? And if you tell them or show them either with digits or with a written number, any number up to 100, can they quickly represent it with the apparatus? The second set of exercises are about partitioning numbers up to 100 in different ways. So here we have the number 52. And we would expect children to know that that is 50 add 2. So they can partition it into two parts, there's the number of tens and the number of ones. But can they do it in a different way? What else could that be? Well, there's lots of answers to that question. But one that we want to focus on is the idea that it's 40 add 12. We want them to spot that quickly because we want them to get ready for the mechanics of exchanging before they have to do exchanging in the context of column subtraction in particular. So you need to work through those two exercises, instantly recognising numbers and partitioning in different ways with each of the bits of apparatus you introduce, your bundleable and unbundleable apparatus, and then with your deans when you introduce that. Right, 
As children start to work on column addition, it's really useful to have mats on the floor or A3 pieces of card on tables to help them organize their tens and their ones. So if they were working on a question like 24 add 31, they can lay out their 24, keeping careful track on the tens and the ones. And then we can remember that addition is about finding the total. So we can take all of this and put it together in our answer space and puzzle out the answer. And children can work in pairs and groups on this and self-correct each other. Now, don't forget, if you've got children who are still struggling to read two digit numbers and it's perfectly normal for that to be the case, you can still use arrow cards to help them decode those digits because they're going to show them that that is two tens and four ones. And then, of course, we're going to move on to the kinds of questions where there are more than ten ones altogether. So let's say that this one was a seven. When we bring all of this apparatus together in the answer space, we're going to get 11 ones. So we will get 50 from the tens and 11 from the ones. And the children need to know that they can exchange 10 of the ones for a 10 and see that the answer is 61. So they need to do lots of work like this that's simply about building the answers. And they may just want to show you their answers with arrow cards. It shows a really deep understanding of what's going on if they can do that. It's hugely satisfying, hugely fun. This structure is liberating them to do really complicated calculations that should work their brains at this level. And they need to work in this way for a long time before you consider allowing them to work with notated column addition. Working with notated column addition is on the English primary national curriculum at this level and it is examined and children are not allowed to use apparatus. If that wasn't the case, I would strongly recommend that there would be no need for children to work in that way at this age. What matters is that they deeply understand what's going on and can do the calculations and are confident that they can do the calculations and are enjoying it and see themselves as identifying with this maths. And for some children, working in the abstract with the notation will be too much because their working memory isn't yet sufficiently well developed for them to imagine all this. A lot of children will be able to do that at this stage, but some won't quite yet. So it's a shame that we have to put that level of challenge in when this is the right thing to be doing. So if your curriculum doesn't require notated form at this stage, then that's excellent. But you absolutely can do this kind of work and it is great fun. So what about subtraction? In theory, it's just as easy. In practice, it isn't. And I'll show you why. So to understand the problem, let's consider a subtraction like 47 subtract 23. Now, what I want to highlight is that there's a big question here. Should we construct both numbers with Dean's or whatever base 10 apparatus we're using? What do you think? Well, what really matters as you find your answer is that you are absolutely clear that this is about part, part, whole. This is about splitting 47 into 23 and the other part. And the other part is your answer. That's what we don't know. So you can physically just start with one set of apparatus, which is the 47, and split it like this. And then you can take the remaining apparatus down to here, and that is your answer. And that's a perfectly valid way to work. If you do decide to build the number that you're subtracting with your Dean's or your base 10 apparatus as well, then you need to reference the fact that we're trying to split this into two parts. So you're looking for the quantity that will go down here that will then add back with this to make this. Overall, I think it's best just to work with the 47 and split it. But if you are going to do it this way, then I wanted to draw attention to how tricky it is to keep real understanding of what's going on. This subtraction is about 
a missing part at a deep level and understanding it at the deep level makes this so much easier. So now I've just swapped the three and the seven to illustrate the final part of column addition and subtraction, which is subtraction with exchanging. So here we're trying to split the 43 into 27 and the other part. And we are going to struggle because we can't split three into seven and something else. So we have to exchange. One of these terms will have to go. So now we have 30 and 13. And now we can split the 43 into the 27 and bring down the remaining part, which is 16. Now, if you are unlucky enough that your children are going to have to work in the abstract without apparatus on this, as they have to in England, you need to set up your formal notation carefully. So we will need to exchange a 10 there, leaving three tens, and that will become 13. There are different ways of doing this. It doesn't particularly matter as long as you're consistent. And then we had the 13 ones and at every stage we should ensure that they're drawing pictures in their head that relate back to the apparatus. 13 ones subtract the seven ones. This takes us back to our work on numbers to 20. Can they visualize the 13 as fives and ones and the seven disappearing and see the remaining six? And then the three subtract two is a one. If you weren't following what I was saying there, you need to watch the video on numbers to 20 because it's really efficient and wise to deliberately make links between that work and this work as children start to work on column addition and subtraction, that it's the same thing, adding or subtracting two numbers within 20. They need to be visualising it as fives and ones. So here's a link to that video now if you need it. And as always, there'll be a link in the description as well. So your takeaways from this video are that you should be working with two representations of base 10 apparatus. One that is splittable and then your deans, which children need to exchange. You need to do warm up exercises to check that they're correctly, rapidly identifying numbers and representing numbers and that they can partition them in different ways. And especially they should partition a number like 63 not just as 60 and three, but also as 50 and 13 to get them ready for exchanging. And then we work slowly through column addition and subtraction, having lots of fun with the apparatus, working on mats and focusing on ensuring every child learns to imagine the base 10 apparatus of their choice in their head as they're trying to do these calculations. And with the subtraction, it is better just to start with the total and then split it into the number that you're subtracting and the answer, rather than to build both the total and the number that you're subtracting. If you do move on to calculations that are simply notated, if a child goes wrong, please give them the apparatus back, but also deliberately make the links with the work we did on calculating with numbers within 20. My final tip is make sure that they still see those column addition and subtraction calculations written horizontally and know that they need to change the way they're written to work in that way. Thanks for caring enough to put this time into your professional development so that you can be an awesome maths teacher. If you've not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe so you can find it again. The next video in this series will be about teaching fraction age six to seven. If you'd like to see my full list of videos and free worksheets that are available, just have a look in the description of this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments. Take care. Bye for now.